Yeah. So where I started, the way I started was I was always the, you know, I guess, quote unquote, the fat kid at school. Okay, so I remember, um, you know, I was, I was the kid who was always picked last in sports, always, you know, not very good at school, probably a D, average student, really low self-confidence. Um, basically, I was an early developer. Okay, so I was the tallest in the class at prep right until basically year nine. That's where people started to get obviously get their growth spurts. Um, so I was always the heaviest in the class and tallest in the class. So, um, and I was overweight coming from an Italian background. You know, spending every weekend at my nonna's. Um, I'm not pretty much every day after school at my nonna's. You know, we were fed and in the you know, Italian culture a little bit. It's a little bit offensive if you don't eat the food in front of you. So there was a lot of overeating, I guess, in in that. And obviously, getting overweight, overeating, uh, being quite, as I said, quote unquote, the fat kid. Um, started my journey probably in the uh, eight. I started to try and try and lose weight. I was one of these people who was trying to lose weight, but I didn't really know anything about it. I didn't really know much about nutrition. Um, or maybe it was 14 at the time, I think. Um, I didn't really know much about nutrition. Okay, so I'll go to the gym, and I remember at Acro. Arena, it was actually the first gym that I think I ever started at. They had this program called Kids Fit. And what they basically did on the program was, you know, you got to the gym two times a week and you just basically did cardio, but they didn't really give you any nutritional advice or whatever. So I remember eating, you know, chicken nuggets before I went to the gym and um, potato cakes or whatever it was because I heard these sound bites that you need to eat regularly to keep your metabolism high. Or, you know, I was hearing these sound bites, so I was, I, was, I didn't know. All right. Um, and then I remember in year, end of year nine, one of my brother's friends by chance rang me up and asked me if he could borrow his stapler. Um, funny story, he actually had to forge his report. That's why he needed a stapler. Anyway, um, he came over, he used the stapler and he said, do you want to come to the gym? And he was the first guy who actually really introduced me to bodybuilding, the style of, of you know, intense training and started talking about nutrition food. I mean, even at that time, I think I was in year 10 at the time, just as a young kid. Even at that time, we still didn't know anything about nutrition. Like I remember going after our training, we used to have like a McChicken because there was protein in it. We thought there was protein in it, right? Mm. So you're speaking to someone who I guess sort of started at the very, very basics and then pro progressing from there. So that's, I mean, that's where I started. But I would say the reason why I never, never, when I got back into the gym in year 10, it was never about trying to lose weight. I spent so much time in the gym because I simply loved the environment. I loved to train. Um, and I just, I just loved being there. So uh, when I got back into school, people noticed I'd lost weight. And from uh, from that, I guess I got a lot more confidence about myself and really decided that I'll do well at school and academically and really pursue that as well to where I am now. And having a business and all these other things and writing books. So that's where it started for me was I learned the confidence through my training and the self-belief through. And that's why I'm so passionate about sharing all this, this because I know what it's done for my life and what it can do for other people's lives when they apply the, the right tools. Yeah. And that's one, one of the biggest things that I, that I like to teach and I teach people is that, um, you know, your health and fitness is absolutely linked to every other area of life. Every area of life is linked to every other area of life. So how you feel about yourself, how you feel about your body is also going to, you know, reflect of how you go into conversations, how you like at your business, how you like with your family. If you don't have the confidence, if you don't see yourself as a leader physically, then that's going to obviously impact your leadership ability in your family, leadership, ability, your business, you, you need to be comfortable in your own skin. That's literally what it is, mm. you know, about being comfortable in your own skin and um, who you are. So I always say, you know, your outer world is going to reflect your inner world, and inner world is definitely going to reflect your outer world. So why not make your outer vessel, so to speak, the very best you can possibly make it? I'm not talking about, you know, developing huge muscles for every single person. I'm just simply talking about developing a lean, healthy, strong body. You know, it's not about huge muscles. Yeah, I've trained, you know, Miss Australia, Mr. Australian, you know, heaps of other bodybuilders, but that's, for me, I guess that's not what I would like to be remembered for, if that makes sense. You know, having an impact on people's lives is, is where the bigger picture and the bigger scheme of things for me is. That's, that's exactly right. And I mean, the saddest thing about, um, I guess, health and fitness and proper eating nutrition today is that we, uh, collectively as a society, we need to look back, I think, uh, prehistorically of where the actual human, how did we used to live and develop it. I mean, if you look at, I've been looking at some very interesting work as of late, and you know, they used to show in um, prehistoric, not prehistoric times, but you know, ancestral times, 
is what, what they did. They spent more time with their families. They spent most of their time actually educating their children. You know, that wasn't it working for someone else. It wasn't trying to make money. It was actually spent trying to educate our children. So you got to look at the human body um, from an evolutionary perspective. And what you'll find if you do is that the human body was meant to, you know, uh, eat natural foods, things that were hunted, fished, gathered and plucked. So we didn't have us, you know, there wasn't, we never, when we were on this planet, there wasn't processed foods. Okay, yeah. so sugars, trans fatty acids, all these things are basically inventions of society. Okay, they're not actually nutritious things that we should be consuming for health. They have nothing to do with health. Even though so sugar's that, growing? Sugar's growing, but it's processed. It's the processing of that sugar. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's the processing that basically robs it of all the nutrients. Yeah. Okay. Another,